Hey, I'm Jennifer Davis and I wanted to show you very quickly how to access Blackboard Collaborate um, so that you can have a chance to go through and look at the features that you may like uh, to incorporate into your class and also so you can determine what kind of questions you would like to ask me for our meeting on Thursday at 11 o'clock a.m. So here we are at my home page, my Angel home page. So you have to log into Angel and then just scroll down and everybody who is uh, teaching an online class should have uh, a sandbox. So here we are with the, the sandbox. So I'm going to click on that and this is going to take me to a faux classroom or a practice classroom where I can uh, create quizzes or videos, anything that I would like to create and I can upload it here and see how it would look in my actual classes. So what we're going to do is um, where it says Illuminate Live, that is how we're going to access Blackboard Collaborate because Illuminate Live is the former name of Blackboard Collaborate. So we're just going to, if you will put your cursor here, you will see these options come up. Click on the pencil. and it will say add a session right here on Illuminate Live and click that and then it gives you the opportunity to name your session if you're naming it for a class you may want to have just um, the name of the class in there or you may just want to have the date normally I just say um, Tuesday November 19th class meeting narration and MLA format. So this allows my students to know what we're discussing that day in class and also allows them the opportunity if they need to go back and, and look at the class to see not just by the date but by the, the title of the class or what we're, what we're working on that day if they want to watch that particular video or another one. So I'm going to go ahead and set this for 4.30 and okay to 5.45 and then my session access this just means um, or this is just provides you an option to allow people to access your session in Blackboard Collaborate um, early or not early at all so you have the option to say um, that they that no one can enter your class early they can come in 15 minutes early, they can go in 30, 45 minutes, or 60 minutes early. I go with the 30 minutes, that's the, the default, and that's what I always go with. Um, moderators and participants, your students are your participants in your classroom, so you don't really have to worry about this section unless you want to invite someone else to come in and moderate the class with you. You can even um, designate particular students that you would like to serve as moderators um, if that would work for um, your a project or whatever that you're working on but you don't have to and generally for a regular class meeting for me I just skip this part here and I go right to session session attributes and in, in this session in this section you have the option of your recording mode is the very first one so this really is the most important one uh, as a synchronous teacher because you have to allow students uh, to come in and look at your sessions later on that is that is one of the great features about teaching synchronous courses is that people who are absent from your class can always go back in and view a previous class but it's also excellent for people who did it who did come to your class and just want to go back in and listen to what you said about a project or a due date or whatever so you have the option for manual or automatic or disable completely so for us disabled is not an option if you're teaching synchronous you can do automatic or manual the the cons for manual uh, in, include forgetting to press the record button which I have done a couple of times and that makes me sick because I've taught a great class and now people who were absent that day could not go back in and hear it so that's very frustrating um, however um, the cons for automatic um, include 
the fact that you cannot stop recording. Once you choose automatic recording, then when you go into that class, that recorder comes on and you're not able to turn the recorder off. And somebody might say, well, why does it matter? You're recording the whole session. The problem with that is if you have somebody to stay around after class to ask you a couple of questions, um, you your voices will be recorded so whatever you're talking about if it's a grade or or anything personal issue is on that class recording so when that happens to me I just tell them that I need to meet them on Skype or um, talk to them through email or whatever because I, I really don't want to have their personal information um, in a recording that people can go back in and listen to so so um, even though it can be very inconvenient when you forget to press record, I still think that manual recording is the best option, at least for me. Um, and then I like to give um, two maximum speakers for when I first come in. I can always, you can always change it once you get in there to allow six people to talk at a time, but that can get rather confusing. So I like to just choose two. And then um, all permissions, and then raise hand on entry so as people enter your class um, a, a hand goes up beside of uh, each person's name and then click create and you're gonna have one more feature or option here you can send out an email to your um, participants and even to your moderator if you wish I do like to send out one to my students particularly during the first couple of weeks of class but I think I still do it I, I like to send that email out just to say um, um, at first I'll say hey um, guys remember that we have class this uh, today at 530 I'll see you there and now it's simply hey guys see you in a little bit but the first few weeks of the semester it's a great way to remind them that uh, you are meeting in uh, Angel and then via Blackboard Collaborate. So I always click um, send, I mean, so I'm sorry, continue and send confirmation email. However, because of this being in my sandbox, I'm just going to click sending without confirmation. And then exit the session, and the session will appear to you right here under eliminate life so again you're not going to see the, the the words blackboard collaborate until you actually enter into your virtual lecture hall so once you go in make sure you have the current version of java as well and it takes a couple of minutes to, to actually get into the class so probably it's best not to schedule a class right before your Blackboard Collaborate class just in case. Okay, so here we are in the Blackboard Collaborate lecture hall and the very first very first thing to do is click record so this will allow you to record and the cool thing is is if you do have somebody after class who wants to talk with you you can stop that recording and carry on your conversation with that person with no problems and not worrying about it being recorded for other people to come in and see but in any event I'm going to cancel that I don't need to have two recordings at the same time and turn on your talk and just a little uh, word of wisdom I probably would not use both talk and video throughout my entire um, class session simply because when you have so many so many um, processes going on at the same time it seems like I have a lot more students saying uh, Miss Giles you're breaking up or you're, you're fading out I can't hear you so I usually turn on the video to say hey everybody how are you doing and have a little bit of talk before class starts formally and then once class starts I turn off the video but I tell them I'm turning the video off and then we're just gonna have the, the little uh, we can all, all talk or whatever and you can see here are the permissions that your students have so when you click all permissions when you're creating that class these are the permissions that you are granting your class and then once you get in if you would like to grant them um, the application sharing or the web tour um, you can do that but I usually do not do that I usually just keep these available to them and as they come in their names will filter in here in the main room and the hand will be up like this 
and then I can just turn that hand off and lower it and we can chat in here in the little chat area so it's very uh, it's a very great place I think to have class and um, most of my students who uh, in my in my synchronous courses who use this really enjoy it so I hope that you get a chance to go in uh, or to come in and actually play around with the different features in Blackboard Collaborate and then sort of create your questions and let me know if you could let me know what questions you might have about Blackboard Collaborate ahead of time but if you don't if, or if you're not able to work in Blackboard Collaborate, that's fine. Please attend the session anyway and just listen in. If you don't have any questions or you're just kind of curious, just come listen in. We won't bite. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on Thursday uh, right here.